Hello, and welcome to uh, Lecture 15. Uh, this will wrap up our discussion of alcohol and inhalants. Uh, this will be a relatively brief lecture uh, just to uh, discuss the effects um, and uh, difficulties associated uh, with inhalants. So inhalants are really just anything that people inhale or huff. This is a sort of heterogeneous group of central nervous system depressants, generally volatile at room temperature. That is, they'll be vaporized from liquid uh, when they're exposed to air, so make them inhalable. Uh, these include things like nitrites, nitroglycerin, amyl nitrate, and butyl nitrate, which are both um, inhalants known as poppers, which are associated with um, club uh, nightclubs as well as um, sex. Uh, there are, of course, uh, inhaled anesthetics, uh, ether, halothane, nitrous oxide um, are a couple of examples of inhaled anesthetics. Uh, some inhaled solvents include things like toluene and butane. These tend to be what we call volatile organic solvents, things like glue, gasoline, paint thinner, or aer aerosols, and these are halogenated hydrocarbons, things like hairspray, typewriter correction fluid, People will get high on or try to get high on just about anything. And this is one of those that's uh, very difficult to treat if people uh, end up with a problem uh, with this type of inhalant. There's a terrific episode of um, the television show Intervention um, about a girl named Allison. It's about Allison the Huffer, and she was addicted to inhaling those um, sprays you use to clean your keyboard because they have just enough... Uh, accelerant in them that people can actually get high. And I think it's a really good uh, a really good example of how this can get incredibly out of hand. So some of the harmful effects of uh, inhalants include permanent brain damage and memory loss, primarily due to hypoxia, including hearing loss, uh, some low nosebleeds, slurred speech, you can suffocate, get irregular heartbeats and have a heart attack, and then can cause damage to all sorts of um, internal organs, including bone marrow depression, um, abdominal pain, etc. So who abuses inhalants? The most common users are, tend to be young kids, age 12 to 17. Uh, they get high on what they can get a hold of. Uh, in the U.S. prevalence among adolescents is exceeded only by alcohol, tobacco, and marijuana. There are a, quite a few injuries associated with um, use, particularly more associated with how frequently people use them. But death can certainly occur in a first-time user. Um, so, for example, whippets, uh, which is oxide, uh, can depress breathing um, in uh, users. And we see 70% of deaths from inhalants uh, were 22 years or younger, 95% were male, and 46% of fatalities were actually from gasoline fumes. So here's a distribution of the age ranges of people who use various inhalants. Um, you can see generally it's right there in those sort of adolescent teenage years. The acute effects of inhalants include intoxication, disorientation, impaired judgment, hallucinations and ataxia, or uh, an ability to do skilled motor movements. It tends to last only a few minutes, which tends to lead to repeated use over several hours, uh, trying to keep that effect going. Uh, this can be very dangerous, generally due to hypoxia, um, so lack of oxygen to the brain, uh, lack of oxygen to... Um, the internal organs and can lead to potential organ toxicity. So this is a very dangerous um, thing to engage in and all I can say is I encourage no one to engage in this kind of uh, inhalation activity. So the chronic effects of use of inhalants include peripheral and central nervous system dysfunction. You can actually get liver or kidney failure. This can cause loss of cognitive functions, loss of coordination, and even some dementia. Studies with uh, sort of normals, people that don't abuse drugs, cocaine abusers, and inhalant abusers. Inhalant abusers scored the lowest in working memory planning and problem solving. So these drugs cause more brain damage than any of the other drugs that we tend to talk about. So these are particularly dangerous uh, for people who use chronically. Uh, almost 50% of uh, kids had brain abnormalities in magnetic resonance imaging scanned compared with only 25% of cocaine abusers. So this is a really significant problem. So these kind of inhalants, in particular huffing of whatever is around the house, is very dangerous. And so it's something to be mindful of. If you have kids, talk with them about them, put these things out of their reach, uh, and make sure that they don't have access to them. 
Treatment for inhalant abuse includes um, basically supplemental oxygen if they have acute inhalation problems just to keep their oxygen flow going. Chronic users tend to be very resistant to treatment and the best um, treatment is prevention. Uh, keep kids from uh, engaging this kind of behavior. Uh, maybe something they grow out of, but you, you really want to be mindful of this kind of abuse. So that's a quick introduction to inhalants. Uh, not something uh, a great deal of adults engage in. Some people do whippets at uh, club events. Um, and again, these uh, can be particularly dangerous, so be cautious.